Today I'm standing next to a small irrigation tank, almost 450 years old, just outside Colombo in Sri Lanka. Tanks such as this one have been the mainstay of Sri Lanka's irrigation industry over the last, four, over the last almost 1,000 years. In today's edition of Straight Talk, we're going to be looking at how water storage such as this will be the major way that we can adapt against the threat of climate change in the future. How will climate change impact water resources? Climate change is going to have some very profound impacts on the world's freshwater resources. Recently, we've seen the, the experiences of, that have followed 10 years of drought in south, southeastern Australia. In China, we've seen devastating drought followed by incredibly heavy rains. And as recently as a few months, last month, we've seen very, very intense monsoon rains in uh, Pakistan of an, uh, of an unprecedented nature. What I think is going to happen is that uh, these kind of effects are going to be seen increasingly frequently throughout uh, many of the countries of the world. They'll be characterised by later onset of the monsoons, shorter duration monsoons and much heavier rainfall uh, occurring during the monsoon. This is going to make things very difficult for many farmers growing crops like this uh, rice which I'm standing next to today uh, in terms of ensuring water supply and ensuring they can finish their their crop appropriately to feed their families and to feed uh, their communities. We're going to need very innovative solutions to deal with these uh, problems caused by climate change and climate variability. How can we respond to protect agricultural production? Research and uh, common sense suggests that Increasing water storage is one way that we can ensure agricultural production against the impacts of climate change. Small scale storages may help uh, farmers uh, with supplementary irrigation which will tide them through periods of drought, both them and their animals, uh, through growing vegetables that they can consume and take to market. Large, st large scale storages may actually help in terms of national food security uh, if if we can combine them for use for both hydropower and for food production. Storage also will help us mitigate against uh, some levels of floods, but sometimes not uh, completely against the levels of floods we've seen recently in Pakistan. What are levels of water storage like in developing countries? It's interesting to compare the amount of water storage in uh, developing countries, particularly sub-Saharan Africa, with what we store in the West. Australia, for example, stores about 5,000 cubic metres of water per person. That's about two Olympic swimming pools full of water per person. This allows uh, those countries to tide their agriculture through periods of quite prolonged drought. If we compare that figure with what is stored in Ethiopia, the figure there is about 38 cubic metres per person. That's enough water to supply a, a Western family for their domestic uses for about uh, 40 days. So storage in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa is, cr is critically low and can easily be improved. There's no shortage of water resources in many countries in that region. Do we just need to build more dams? We know that large dams are socially uh, divisive, they cause environmental problems and they're very expensive. I believe the answer is going to come from looking at a, a mixture of water storage types. That starts simply with improving the water that is stored in the soil by making the soil structure better and stopping runoff, accumulating more water in the soil. Secondly, we can look at rainwater harvesting where we channel water into small uh, storage containers, very important for uh, farm gardens, drinking water supplies and so on. Then we can move up the spectrum to small reservoirs for, built with bulldozers, compounding modest amounts of water, but certainly allowing uh, irrigation of quite high value crops. We then move up the scale further to the medium and large dams with their associated costs and size. But there's one other area which is very important, and that is the underground water that we can store in aquifers beneath our feet in many environments. We can also recharge these aquifers with excess surface runoff if we think about this uh, from the point of view of when that runoff occurs and how we can recharge through wells and through reservoirs. What is needed to stimulate the development of more water storage? 
Firstly, we need a policy environment which is encouraging to building more water storage in terms of regulation, uh, scientific planning and so on. Secondly, we clearly need finance. Finance for uh, medium-sized structures, which will come from uh, the big banks and so on, the development banks. But also, I think, finance to help smallholder farmers build the small structures that we know are so important. And lastly, it's no good having the water stored if we don't train and help farmers build up their own capacity to use that water with a range of new crops uh, and new management techniques. Are there any downsides to more water storage? We need to look at water storage in a scientific manner and based uh, on the social acceptability of what, what is planned. For example, if we store a lot of water in one part of the landscape or upstream in a basin, that may reduce supplies to those communities downstream. So we need to look at this in a balanced way and what is acceptable socially for the different communities. Secondly, in terms of many of the different types of solutions, we need to make sure they are technically feasible. It's no good, for example, building small reservoirs in very sandy environments if it's all going to leak away quickly. Thirdly, we need to look at uh, groundwater from the point of view of what the sustainable yield of that groundwater is. That is, how much water is, can be taken out every year based on the recharge of rainfall into that, that water. It's no good developing groundwater supplies if we use it up in five years and the whole system collapses. Lastly, we need to look at uh, are there any problems with water storages in terms of disease, uh, waterborne diseases caused by insects or other vectors. We need to make sure we put in place a, a very good management plan, such as including fish in the system or other controls, to make sure that those diseases don't impact the communities who would otherwise benefit from the water. Do you really think that water storage can ensure farmers against climate change? IMI has a lot of good documented evidence that water storage uh, helps increase uh, smallholders' incomes, it has decreased their poverty levels, it's also interesting, interestingly allowed some farmers double or even triple crop uh, cereals and vegetables because of access to water and in some cases where market gardening is uh, enabled it allows more labour to stay on the farms rather than drift to the cities. I strongly believe that water water storage is going to provide very major insurance for many farmers and communities against climate change. It gives truth to the adage that climate change mitigation is all about gases, but climate change adaptation is all about water. This is Colin Chartres at the International Water Management Institute. <music>